Hey guys, Indie Prepper here. Another blade review. This time we're talking about my recent pickup from England. The Fairbairn Sykes, aka British Commando Knife. Classic fighting blade, though it's not technically a fighting blade. We'll talk about that here in a second. Fantastic blades, a lot of history behind them. World War II and pretty much ever since, used by British Commandos. Pretty, pretty blade. Just gorgeous. Love this. Absolutely do, if you can see that nice glint off that. Fine, fine. Finish on the blade. Very nice. Picked this up from England. The first purchase I think I've ever made from England. UK. Whatever you want to call it. I owned you noob. Told me about this. Saw it from one of those videos and inquired a lot. And I think after I saw the video and posted a comment or two, to him to find out where he bought the thing. I think I waited about five minutes before buying it. Had to have one. I've seen lots of knockoffs on Bud K for five or six bucks with terrible reviews from what I've seen. I wanted a real one. Asked around. I don't you knew put me on to where to find one. So I got one now. Got in today. Ordered it uh, last Monday. Today is Thursday. So a week and a half to ship from England. That ain't bad. Just short of two weeks. Can't complain. Uh, first thing I've ever ordered in pound sterling. Uh, the basic blade itself, let me pull out the invoice here because I can't remember. The basic blade was 33.95 pounds sterling. So, how much does that equate to? Well, the 33.95 had a 5 pound or 5.5 pound sterling you know, postage and shipping cost. So overall it was 39.45 pounds sterling. So what does that add up to? Well, when I ordered it and went and just checked my uh, debit card and all that for uh, purchase, it came out to $62.65. And I think this is a great blade for that money. I wanted one. I've seen these for a long time. been looking at them forever and ever and ever. Ridiculously priced at gun shows for the old collectible models and all that. But I wanted a modern one that I could beat up and rough around and use. So, I believe this is the third pattern, third generation, if you will. I believe it's called third pattern in uh, the UK. Isles and all that. Bought it from, I don't know how to pronounce this, Haney Haynes or Heine Haynes, something like that. I'll show you that right there. That's where I got this bad boy. Uh, that appears to be, in England, a sporting goods store, from what I can gather. Knives and blades and survival stuff. I don't know. I've had some responses in the past about them having products and had to respond, I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. Never heard of the store. Well, now I know. So, let's go over the basics of this blade. It's a carbon steel blade. It's a about 7 inch long blade with approximately 4.5 inch handle grip on it for the full length of grip. All black. You can get them in polished and all sorts of other styles. I got the all black just because this is a commando knife. This is supposed to be black and concealable. Nice ribbing here all the way around. Very easy to handle. You know, feels good in the hand. A little small, I think, and you know, compared to our American style blades, but I think it's good for its purpose. We'll talk about the purpose here in a second. Now this does have all the markings on it and all, which you will not be able to see, but I'm going to try to show you. Right there is the broadhead arrow an H in a diamond pattern, and the specifics on the blade manufacturer. Let me read that off to you here for a second. Let's see, get this light where I can see it. J. Noel and Sons, Sheffield, England, which is where a lot of these are made. It's got some other proof markings and all that on it. Very nice. Feels very good in the hand, very lightweight, very quick, which is exactly what you'd want for this. Now what I think is interesting is you've got the, uh, the nut here on the back side. Hopefully you can see that nut right there. Which secures the whole thing together, tightens the whole thing. This is a full tang blade, but it, the grip tapers down, you know, the thinner line there. And uh, the handle secures with the nut here, from what I can tell. Very nice, very lightweight. Don't have the actual weight on this, sorry guys, I just hadn't looked that up. Didn't take the time. This is more of a preview because I haven't used this yet. Now, a lot of you guys out there, I've seen these reviews here in the U.S., and a lot of people complain that the blade is not that sharp. Well, I'd say it's sharp enough. Uh, it's not razor sharp like we'd say our 
you know, more knives or something like that are, but that's not what this knife is for. This is not an actual fighting knife. This is a commando knife. As you can tell by the blade style on this, this is meant for one thing and one thing only. This is meant as a thrusting, stabbing style blade. You're not supposed to slash with this thing. You couldn't have pinch, but honestly, I looked at the history of this thing, and it's for silent killing. This is a killing blade. This is not a utility knife, okay? This is not meant to be batoned or used for woodworking, woodcraft, and all of that. And obviously, if you know anything about blade design, look at the, the design on this. This is not meant for general purpose. This is meant for one purpose alone, thrusting forward. So, from what I can tell, and the history of these blades, they're meant for killing, silent killing. You know, stabbing somebody's neck, coming up from behind them, nice and quiet, small, smooth, thunk, down you go. So, I owned you noob said he wasn't sure if he was going to stab with this thing. I will. I'm going to be using this thing. You know, I paid for it. I'm going to use it, just mess around with, see what I can do. You know, hopefully not having to stab anybody with this personally, but, you know, if it came to it and this is what I had to have around, yeah, okay, that's fine. I prefer firearms, big firearms fan, but a nice good backup to a firearm. So, very nice blade, very well weighted. Um, the center point on this blade is about there or so. Well, you can't see it on the video because this thing is... Anyway, that's about right, so... Very well balanced. Probably not usable. Personally, I wouldn't for throwing or anything like that. Again, this is an in-close, personal, get-to-know-you kind of blade. And get to know you for a very brief period of time. High carbon steel, like I said, very nice. I'll show you this compared to an American style in a second, but we're going to talk about this sheath here right now. Uh, it's, it's leather. I like leather sheaths. It's black, obviously. It's okay. It's not the thickest grade leather I've ever seen. It's not the best ever, but I think it's going to be okay. Um, you got a little belt loop here on the back side. Right there. If you can see that. You've got a little elastic band up here to secure the blade grip handle. That's okay. I, I like our snaps and stuff like that here in the U.S. a little bit better. I think it's a little better overall. Could I get to use this? I could. Let me show you how this thing fits in. Fits in. Fits in fairly snugly, but not as well as it needs to for general purpose. You're going to need the elastic band. The elastic band goes up over the back end of the grip. The, you know, once you get past the grip, uh, ribbing here, that's where it fits. So you're going to have to learn to flip that thing open, pull it out. So, not bad, but just a little different from what I'm used to in my personal opinion. You've got a little, I believe it's metal. It feels like metal anyway. It might be plastic. Bottom cover there is to keep your blade from stabbing out the side of this thing when you're sheathing the thing. Uh, got some rivets, two rivets from the belt loop to the actual sheath. One rivet down here on the bottom side where you get your cover to protect from the blade punching through. Now I saw these two sets of sewed in little oh, leaflets, whatever they are. And I was like, what the heck was that? I don't know what that was. I had to look it up. But uh, looking that up, that is for use for sewing into garments, that type stuff. You can sew, you can use these little leather extensions here, little tabs, to sew inside a jacket or coat, something like that, so you can keep a blade around nice and handy, a nice, decent blade, if you need it in a hurry. So, that's interesting. I may actually try that. Heck, I may order a second one and use it for that, for carrying around and all that. I don't know. We'll see how that works out. So that's just interesting. I just didn't know what that was, but that's what it's for. So the sheath, it gets a fair rating so far. I haven't used it a lot yet, but I don't know. I've seen a lot better. Condor knife and tool makes better. So I'd say this is a fairly cheap sheath with a great knife. Now, let's compare this to our modern K-Bar, our American classic. Now, as you can tell, let me get this in the camera here so you can see. As I said, as you can tell, these are almost identical lengths. Seven inch blade, roughly four and a half inch handle, give or take. These are different blades for different purposes, okay? So, they're not actually a fair comparison. I know I owned you knew made a comment that he preferred this to this. Mm, depends on the purpose. For personal defense, stabbing people who aren't seeing me coming up behind them, yeah, this. Well, I'm shoving this to somebody's neck. I want this one. General combat fighting knife, 
this one, the K-Bar, all the way go USA. This is a stiletto. This is made for quiet, quick work. This is down and dirty. This is a beer, kick butt, take names type blade. Just different. This has got a small style, little thin grip. This has got a big beefy leather wrap grip. You can baton with this thing for woodcraft. You can dig, you can pry, you can do any type of bloody thing you want with a K-Bar. Is a K-Bar indestructible? No, no blade is, but for general bushcraft, this is the way you want to go. This is a gorgeous blade. It's nice. It's going to get the job done. Okay. Love my K-Bar. I'm still going to be carrying a K-Bar. I don't carry this one. This is my pretty presentation one, as you can obviously tell. Because it doesn't have much you know, beating or wear on it. Hardly any at all. This is a combat knife. This is a commando blade. That's what this is for. It's commando use. So... I would not carry this as my primary blade out in the field. Now, at well, if I was in a fight, maybe. Uh, sneak it up on people. But for general bushcraft and all that, this knife is not going to be what you want. And like I said before, a lot of people complain about the sharpness of this blade. It's sharp enough. It's not razor sharp. But again, this is a thrusting blade. It has a very nasty point on it. It's going to be fine for thrusting, and that's what it's for. So don't make it anything that you don't want to. Some people complained about trying to sharpen the edges of this blade, and they said they ruined the finish. Well, of course you did. You weren't supposed to sharpen the blade. Leave it as is. It's fine. It's a thrusting blade. It's for the point. That's all you want. So, K-Bar versus your British Commando knife. Very different blades. Uh, they cost about the same. This one cost me 55 bucks, maybe 50 This one cost me, like I said, about 65 or so. Now, I paid a little more for this one on a premium because I, I just wanted it. This is more useful. Go K-Bar if you have to have all in one. This is just a nice novelty. Um, I like it. I may carry it. Especially inside of a jacket, something like that, with the option of the sheath. I may do that here in South Carolina because nobody's going to care. A uh, fixed blade knife, eh, it's fine. Carry it around. You know, whatever. Don't know. I may carry this out in the field just to play around with it. Like it a lot. So... There's my review, or preview, I suppose. I'm going to use this thing and let you know what I think at some point later once I've got some experience with it. Indie Prepper, out.